Alrighty, so I'm printing out a full-size 8x10 transparency here. This will take a minute or two. And then we'll be taking the transparency and placing it on a piece of our photosensitive paper and doing a contact print to produce our print for framing. And we'll come back for that in a couple minutes. Okay. So, we've got a piece of our uh, turmeric dyed paper here. As you can see, it's a brilliant yellow as it turns out to be. The dye is a little bit uneven on this, so I think that the print may actually also come out a little bit uneven. But the whole process here is a little experimental in the first place, and I kind of like the organic nature of it being a little bit unpredictable. So, basically what I'm doing, this is just a... Uh, I think this is 11 by 14 um, picture frame, cheap plastic frame. Uh, it's got the uh, glass still in it. And now I'm going to take our transparency and I'm going to place it printed side up, the ink side up, because I find it sticks to the glass less than the paper. And if it sticks to the paper, it ruins both the transparency and the print you're trying to make. So we've got our uh, transparency now on top of our paper. And now we're just going to place this other piece of glass. This is just a, a piece of glass from an 8x10 uh, frame on top of it to hold it nice and flat. And we are ready to expose our 8x10 here. And I'm going to go take this outside and place it in the sunshine. It's a partially cloudy day here today a little bit overcast so I don't know exactly how long this will take um, I'm estimating probably about two hours and I'll go put it out there and we'll take it from there now as you can see I've just got it sitting actually on top of my uh, little cheap barbecue grill here uh, sitting out in the yard in a little patch of grass where the dogs don't tend to go so they don't knock into it uh, this is going to sit here for about two hours. Here you can see the uh, sunshine coming in and the ultraviolet light from the sunlight is going to bleach out most of the yellow here. And then when we go to develop it, we'll have the image left behind. When we come back, when it's fully exposed in an hour and a half to two hours, this yellow will be pretty much gone and reduced to almost a white at which point it'll be ready to take in and develop using our borax solution. And we'll do that when we come back. Okay, just wanted to take a moment and show you. Um, you'll see it exposing. This is about an hour now. Now I'm going to put down next to it a piece of white plain paper so you can see the color difference. And a piece of the paper that has been dyed but not exposed yet and not bleached out at all. So you can see Already there's a significant difference between the intensity of the yellow in the test strip there that has not been exposed and the eagle which has been exposed for about an hour now. And there's regular white paper for a reference. Um, we won't make it to full white paper whiteness with the bleach out by the UV but it will get a lot whiter than it is now. Uh, I thought you guys would appreciate uh, a view through the process and that's about it. We'll be coming back in probably another, I'd say an hour. Alright, so we're back and I wanted to show you we're pretty much fully exposed. Okay, so I'm going to set these same pieces of paper down. Okay, that's the white. And then here's the unexposed original yellow. As you can see, and is bleached out quite extensively. It's not completely white, but most of the yellow has been bleached out by the sun. Now I want to get my, my little test strip out of the sun here because that'll bleach out too pretty quickly, especially now we're getting quite a bit of direct sun. So I'm gonna be grabbing this and bringing it inside 
and then we'll develop it. Okay, so uh, we're ready to go ahead and do our developing. Um, really can't get much easier. Got a glass of tap water here, and I'm going to take some borax, just standard laundry borax, and I'm going to put a couple of teaspoons in there. I use uh, cool water, not cold. You want to have the borax be able to dissolve in there. You give it a stir. What you're doing is creating a solution that's going to uh, bind the boron to the dye that's left behind that hasn't been bleached out by the ultraviolet. Now you, I just use this I think as a top of a cake pan, could be to a cookie sheet, I'm not sure. Now we're going to take apart our frame here. Oh, that's right, we don't even have to. No, we just need to remove the top. All right. Now we can remove our transparency. Now, this may or may not be very visible, but you can see that the print is there. It's just a very light yellow, but it's quite visible, actually to the naked eye and hopefully on camera, but it's not really that important because of what we're about to do. Because the dye that's left on the paper, that's the darker yellow here, is going to bind with the uh, boron in the borax and turn this lovely sepia color. And we're just going to wet the paper. Let it soak in. And you can see our image developing there. Right. And we want to make sure that we get a good amount here because we want to make sure that there's enough reaction occurring to bind the dye into the paper and to produce the tone that we want this 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 nice dark sepia toning so you just have enough solution there like i said standard Laundry borax, you can get it at any grocery store, I don't know if you get it at a convenience store, but you get it at a Walmart, that type of place. And uh, we're going to let this develop here for a moment, a minute or two here. I'm going to flip it over in the solution to have it get to it that way also. And we're just going to let it sit here a minute. And then I think I'm going to pull it on and just allow it to dry on the glass that we used as the plate to do the print on. So, it will be nice and flat. And this is our finished print. I just dumped out the extra borax. And as you can see, you now have a beautiful beautiful sepia toned print of our eagle. The focus is on really spot on on this, not so much on the camera at the moment, but when it dries I'll be able to give you a better idea. All right, 
Just thought I'd show you the uh, end results here. Um, we have two different prints. This is the print that I've been making in the video here. I hit it with a little bit of uh, polyurethane spray and it's not too bad. I think I could do a little bit better on the exposure and toning here. Here's another one. The uh, print I did on this one, however, you can see I got the emulsion on the paper a little unevenly. However, the uh, contrast and toning and sharpness seems to be better on that one. This process is one that you can fiddle around with and experiment with. There's a lot of moving parts to it, but it's so cheap that it's a heck of a way to spend a little time and have a little fun and experiment with some chemistry you might not otherwise do. So uh, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching the video and we'll see you later. Signing off.